in you. I'd like to just take just a few moments uh, and be thankful, especially the people who was on our uh, committees that uh, had us in Cocoa Bar. It's been almost a year uh, since we had our groundbreaking ceremony uh, to this to this point, and uh, I, I, I can only imagine what how the Lord's going to uh, use this place and use each one of us uh, as we draw close to him, but uh, uh, we've prayed, uh, we've worked, and you guys have been patient, and I really appreciate that, and I know we've had some challenges going in, and we had some challenges today getting in, we've had some challenges as we move, but I continue to uh, be patient as we do that. Uh, but on this building committee team, I'd like to uh, say a special thank you to Carol Sparks, uh, Sharon Phillips, Matt Holloman, David Doyle, Terry Rainey, David Land, Tommy Miller, and I'm sure there's probably some that I, I've missed, but thank you from the bottom of my heart. The Lord has used you, and uh, as we continue on, and there's still some things that are left to be done, uh, so they'll finish those up in the days to come. But, uh, man, what a great time and a great place uh, that the Lord has placed us at this time to worship him, draw close to him. And, uh, and so for that, I'm so ever grateful. So we're going to continue on. We are standing on holy ground, and I know that there are angels all around.
Good morning. Don't they look great? I, I'm going to tell you. I thank God for every one of them. They were here at 7.15 this morning uh, getting ready. I thank everyone who's been working around the clock the last couple of weeks to bring us to this point. We're almost uh, complete, and the parking lot out front should be finished next week, weather uh, permitting, some other things over the next couple of, of weeks. Uh, but this morning, Vicki and I, I, I even got Vicki to church at 8 o'clock this morning. God is in the house. But we were standing back there in the back while uh, the choir uh, was practicing. And I bent over and whispered in her ear, Go to sweetheart, the Lord's brought us a long way over the years. And it's always been the Lord. It will always be the Lord. Thank God for our God, for he is a great God. We come to this time now to stop for just a moment for our dedication prayer. We'll have special music and try to get into the message. But we dedicate this new house of worship that he's given us, each one of us dedicating our own life to fulfill his purpose, his mission for our life and for this church. It is all God, but people make themselves available to God as God touches hearts. And I'm thankful for all that God has used. And none want their names mentioned. Their names will not be mentioned. But if I outlive them, I get to preach the funeral. I'll take care of it then. But I'm going to ask you, if you would, to stand. When Solomon dedicated the temple in First Chron Second Chronicles chapter 6, he had a bronze platform. He got up on that, knelt, raised his hands towards heaven. I'm too old to kneel and get up four foot in the air, but I'll stand right here. But I ask as you bow with me as we go to God and pray in your hearts as I pray aloud for God's blessing. <laughs> Father God in heaven, I cannot thank you enough for being a great God that you are. Our Father, for whatever reason, choosing this place, the Union Valley Baptist Church, since 1927 till today, to be a place where the gospel would be preached, that lives might be touched, that people might be ushered into the kingdom. And, Father, it's all about you. It's all about you. And, Father, if we ever forget that, we're doomed as a church. I'll pray that we never forget from whose hand this blessing comes from and for whose purpose that we serve, each and every one of us. And, Father, the only enemy that we have is Satan trying to work in the hearts and lives of people. But I pray, Father, the day that we resolve to be the people that you've called us to be, that we will stand and be faithful to you and encourage one another as we begin this next part of our journey together as a church until you come to receive your church into your heaven. And, Father, just as you've used names of people in the past, Father, you used Fishers and Hills and Weatherfords and so many others over the years, and we thank you for each one. And, Father, so many that you're using today. And, Father, I thank you for those sweet people in the past. I love each and every one of them. I thank you for everyone that is here, and I love everybody here today. And so, Father, I pray for your hand to be upon us. I pray that you continue to use this church. I 
pray that you would empower this church, Father, to do nothing but to be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and how you, a great God that you are, are, have brought salvation to sinful man through him and to know that everyone can enjoy what we have, salvation and a personal relation with you and the hope of heaven when our life is over. So thank you, Father, for today. Thank you, Father, today for Union Valley. And we commit her to you in the days to come. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. 
it couldn't get any better than that this morning. I thank God for that and making the service come alive this morning. My wife, a few weeks ago, uh, we were in here. First time she had seen it, we had the chairs in at that time. And she was in her wheelchair, and I was pushing her around so she could get to see everything. And as we walked through here, coming through here, she kept saying over and over again, how beautiful it is, how beautiful it is, how beautiful it is. But my problem is every time she said how beautiful it is, she could follow it, do you think you can preach in here? I didn't think much of it the first time, the second time. But when she continued to say it, I knew right then she didn't have a lot of confidence in me. And I don't have a lot of confidence in me this morning. Uh, but I come this morning with a full heart and a grateful heart. And I want to say this as everybody's coming in now. And see, this is all our choir. And this just come to my mind for just a moment. If you've ever given money, get that out of the way first. If you've ever taught a class, if you've ever helped clean up after an event, ever sang in the choir, worked in the sound booth, worked in the nursery, of all the different duties, or if you simply you're here because your name is on the church roll, you're a member of this church, would you stand? membership of this church, you stand. Heard it said one time, uh, and I'll say it again this morning, you are Union Valley. And it is God working through each and every one of you that makes this church special by surrendering to his will, saying yes, Lord, in all that we do. And the future depends on each and every one of you allowing God to work through you. It is our great God that God uses people. He uses people. Maybe if you were making a choice of who to use, you would bother choose somebody else. But God chooses us because he loves us and he wants to show the rest of the world what he can do through people who will just say yes to him. So I ask you if you would to Take your word, your scripture, Second Chronicles chapter 6, and everybody else can stand up now. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 17, I'll read down through verse 21. Now then, O Lord God of Israel, let thy word be verified, which thou hast spoken unto thy servant David. But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house which I have built. Have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication. O Lord my God, to hearken unto thy cry and in the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee. That thine eyes may be opened unto this house day and night. Upon the place whereof thou hast said thou wouldst put thy name there to hearken unto the prayer which thy servant prayeth toward this place. Hearken therefore unto the supplication of thy servant of thy people Israel, which they shall make toward this place. Hear thou from thy dwelling place, even from heaven, and when thou hearest, forgive. And if a man sin against his neighbor, and an oath he be laid upon him to make him swear, and thy oath come before thine altar to the house, then hear thou from heaven, and do and judge thy servants by requiting the wicked, by recompensing his own way upon his head, and by justifying the righteous, by giving him according to his righteousness. Bow with me as we pray. Father, once more, I thank you again for this morning, for your mighty work in this church over the years, and even today. I thank you, Father, for every soul that is here as we've come to celebrate what you and you alone have done. And I pray that as we gather, Father, that we remember this is your house. We are the people that make up the house, but it is your house for your glory. And I pray, Father, what this church should be mindful of, first and foremost, 
if we're going to fulfill your task for us in the days to come. But then, Father, I thank you for being the great God that you are, and I thank you for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And in his name we pray, amen. You may be seated. You know, today is a day for us to gather. We gather in our new sanctuary, our new auditorium, our new worship center, or whatever name you choose to call it. But they all describe a gathering place for the people of God. Union Valley has been gathering on this place since August 27, 1927. The buildings have changed over the years as have the faces that make up the church. I think we have a picture of the churches of the past, if this is the first time you've ever been here. When it first began to meet in an old one-room schoolhouse. Uh, this was the church that stood here for many years. Then 1974, they built a, a new sanctuary, not that one, but the next one over, that one there that just sits next here. All the buildings that we built have kept going to the right. I don't know if that has anything political in mind, but we keep going right in everything that we do. It was built in 1974. That was the church when Vicki and I first came here in 1980 and became a member of Union Valley. Then in 1995, we built the sanctuary. Well, we left it out. We had one missing there. We have the one that we just left. That is it. There, I messed up this morning. That's the one we just left. I remember moving into that sanctuary on a February morning. It was four degrees outside. We didn't have even had insulation poured in the attic. But the church was full that day. But it was full of the Spirit of God. And now we come to this place that God has blessed us with today. A place that when beginning and we never knew we could do it. We've all been thinking about it for years and finally it's come to fruition. And I truly only believe that it is by the hand of God that we are here today. God has given us a new place to gather in. Yes, the location has expanded. We've continued to, to move further and further to the right, but the nation has changed and the culture has changed almost exponentially. But the purpose for the Union Valley Baptist Church has not changed. We still meet to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We gather to worship, we gather to serve God, we gather to fellowship with one another. And when you think about a church dedication service, a time to dedicate a new building for God's glory, we need to remember that everything we do as a church should be for the glory of God and God alone, for our good Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. No man's name should ever be mentioned, only his name should be mentioned. And on most days like today, a pastor will go to Second Chronicles chapter 6 or he'll go uh, to First Kings chapter 8 and dedication of Solomon's temple erected in Jerusalem after David's reign. It was God's house, though no man made, man, a man made building could house God, the Spirit of God. The first cloud had the manifest presence of God. They had the assurance of the presence of God with them. And friend, we have the assurance of the presence of God with us today. And we need to protect that promise each and every day. Because though the glory of God descended upon that temple on that day so many years ago, in time the glory of God that that spirit would depart from the building. When you look at Ezekiel chapter 10 and chapter 11, because of their sin, the glory of God was seen departing the building. It was seen depart exiting the gates of the city. Because why? They had fallen greatly since that day of that dedication service. When you think back to that now, where that original temple stood, no temple stands today. All that is left is the western wall, the wailing wall, uh, but that was not even part of the original city, uh, uh, temple. Uh, that was part of Herod's temple when he built that later on. But when you think about that particular time, all that stands there today is the golden dome, that dome of the rock, that dome of Islam that stands there. But that temple will remind the people of God's presence. I think Union Valley, the building here, the people here, we're to remind the people in this community about the presence of God. They saw the glory of God enter through the cloud and take up residence. You know, the Herod Temple was just a small shell of that early one. It was said that the second temple was built. When it was built, men cried because it was smaller than the original temple. You know, as we built this and as we've entered in this building, several have come through. I've seen several uh, men uh, who had connections with the church in the past. I've seen several men cry when they entered in here today. It was not because it paled in comparison to a former building. But they remember the lives upon which it was built over the years and the sacrifices that people made to keep this church alive when a lot of people might have let it die. And we gather in here and many times we wonder what would they think if they could see us today. And I truly believe that they would be proud, not of us, but of what God has done in this church. 
and be proud to know that their sacrifices were not for naught, but that God used each and every one of them. And that God will use each and every one of us today. You know, yes, the buildings have gotten bigger over the years. You know, may in some ways have gotten grander. But it's hard to believe what God is doing. And God today does not reside in buildings. He resides in the lives of each and every one of you. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Know you not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. As I said, Union Valley's people have been gathered here since 1927. Born again people who have gathered here with the Spirit of God living in each and every one of them. And so Union Valley, when you think about Union Valley, that's a place where God's people gather. And why do we gather? People say, well, we gather to worship God. Yes, we gather to worship God. We gather to meet to serve God. And yes, we serve God here. We meet to encourage one another. And I pray that we do encourage one another here. We meet to meet the needs of one another, to meet the needs of the community. But we meet to prepare us so that we might go into the world. Think of this. You meet here on Sunday to prepare you so you might go into the world to be a witness of Jesus Christ. And we come here today to get lifted up, to get encouraged, to get strengthened so that we can go out and fulfill our mission. We go out of here of these doors each and every Sunday so that people might have a visible representation of who Jesus is and what he has done for sinful man and what he can do in the lives of all of those who will trust him. Now, you mention the name of Union Valley in this community, and you might get many responses. But the only response that I'm worried about as a pastor to remember this church is when our name is mentioned, what does the Lord Jesus Christ say about us and our church? And I believe that we have been faithful. I believe that God will continue to bless if we'll remain faithful in the years to come. The only time God ever commanded the temple to be built was that one in Jerusalem so many years ago. But I do believe that God has put it in the hearts of man in 1927 to build that first one. I believe that God put it in the hearts of men to build that next sanctuary in 1974. I believe he put it in the hearts of men to build that, the one we just left in 1994. And I believe that God has put it in our heart to build this today. And so there should be no fear about the future as long as we trust God. And when you read about Solomon, you know, when he begins that dedication, what does he do? He begins it with prayer. And everything that we do as a church should be about prayer. Solomon has asked God to listen to the prayers of the people because the prayers of the people would cry out to him at very different times. He says in 2 Chronicles 6, 18, But will God in very deed dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this building which I have built. Have respect, therefore, to the prayer of thy servant and to his supplication, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and the prayer which thy servant prayed before thee. And, and he prayed for that servant, for himself. And for all the people would know that they could pray towards that temple, that they could hear that God would hear their prayers and that God would honor their prayers as they cried out to him. You know, when I think about that temple, what was it to be about? I believe that it was to be a place of prayer. And I believe Union Valley today, in 2024 is where we gather here today, our primary purpose as a church is still to pray. I believe when you go to Matthew, Matthew 21, and Jesus, when he was cleaning out the temple, and he said, my father's house, he said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. We've been built this building, only made possible by the hands of God. But Jesus said this house is to be called a house of prayer. I don't think that has changed over the years. We should be a praying people. And why should we pray? We pray because there's nothing that you could ask for outside that's in the will of God. There's nothing that you could ask him to do that he is unable to perform. God still heals the sick. God still feeds the hungry. God still forgives sin. God still saves sinful man. God can do everything if you read those passages there in 2 Chronicles chapter 6 that Solomon suggested he can do. I believe that I serve a great God, that our God, he can send rain when we pray for rain. I believe we can pray to God and keep our enemies from having victory over us. And just as Solomon asked, uh, I've heard many different things, and the list is long. When you go to God in prayer, you can always expect God to answer that prayer. It may not always be what you asked for, but it's good for what God wanted in your life and for our church today. So Solomon writes all of this knowing, and it and amazes me, writes all of this knowing God has given him all of this, and knowing that even then those people were still sinful people. And even though that God has blessed us, placed us here, given us this great building, has blessed us to the years, we're still sinful people. And we still have a great God that forgives sin. Because he said in 2 Chronicles 6, 36, that they sin against thee, for there is no man which sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them over their enemies, and carry them away captives into a far land. Yes, that they bethink themselves in the land, whether they are captive, and turn and pray unto thee in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, 
if we have done amiss and have dealt wickedly, if they return to thee with all thy heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, whether they have carried them captives and prayed toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, and toward the city which thou hast chosen, toward thy name which I built by thy name, then hear from heaven, even from thy dwelling place, their prayer, their supplications, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people which have sinned. Maintain their cause. And our cause today is God's cause, to live holy lives, to live in front of a lost and dying world, to show people what Jesus Christ can do in a life that has been changed by the gospel. And remember in the words that he said, his house should be a house of prayer. I have, you have direct access to God anytime. Anytime I wish to cry out to God, I know that God will hear my prayers. I make my request made known to him. He is the only one that can know anything about my problems. He's the only one that can provide me what I need, and he's all that Union Valley needs in the days to come. We pray to God. We pray to God. We ask for God for help in time of need. We pray to God when, when we, we sin and we ask need for forgiveness. We're to pray for each other. We're to pray for our nation. Our primary responsibility as a church is to pray. We are to be a praying people. 1 Timothy chapter 2 says, I exhort thee, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for, all, for kings and for all that in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all goodness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. We're to pray. If we want to enjoy life, if we want to bless life, if we want a life on our, that knowing God's hand that puts on us, and if we want a life to, that only God can use in the days to come, we have to cry out to him in prayer. The early church, when they were persecuted, what did they do? They prayed. When they were arrested, what did they do? They prayed. When they needed boldness to speak the word of God, they prayed. When they wanted to see God do an extraordinary work in their lives and in their lives and their church, what did they do? They prayed. The church was birthed in a prayer meeting. When we decided to build this building, it was preceded by much prayer. We did not want to go anywhere that God wanted, did not want us to go. I did not, as a pastor, want to presume upon God to build this thinking that God's going to honor just because we're going to build it. No, I wanted it to be known. I wanted to be sure that it was God who wanted us to build this building. We always go to God. And all that they accomplished as a church in those early days, including the lost being saved, was attributed to to prayer. It's not by the lights or the sound system or the comforts of the building. You got nice chairs there. You've got a little arm you can pull up if you need room or if you and your wife want to date each other in a worship service, you can get close to one another by pulling that arm up. But, but I'm going to tell you something, and we've got lights, and this is beautiful, and I love it, and it's all part of the culture that we live in today. But let me tell you, if you've got to have all of this to worship God, you got a little God because I've got a big God. And all I know is I have to cry out to him and I can have a worship time with him anytime I choose to in my life. We cry out to God for who he is. The temple was a place where the heart and mind and soul of the person doing the praying was shaped and formed so the person doing the praying was shaped and formed to look at the person that God has called him to be. And friend, that's why we come here, so that we might be shaped and we might be formed, so that we might become the people that God has called us to be in our daily lives. That's what the church should be about today. We're not to be known for our, our preaching, our children, our youth programs, any of those things. If we should be known for our praying. Because our praying gives life to our preaching, and our praying gives life to our programs and our singing and all that we do. Because everything that we do, if it's not included with prayer, is as hollow and it is empty and they'll not transform the community that we live in. What takes place solely due to our efforts does ha doesn't have any eternal value. So here's the deal. If we're going to dedicate his house to be a house of prayer, we got to get to praying. And when we call times of prayer, we need to gather to pray. You need to be a praying person at your home, whatever you go through in life. We set a time, set a time, special times of prayer in the church. And we should turn out for that time, and we come in the right spirit, and we cry out to God because we know it wouldn't be called if we didn't see something that was needed at the time. You remember when the church, when people had a problem in the nation, people flocked to the church. Why? Because they knew the church prayed. They knew the church had a connection with God, and they knew God could fix problems. 
a few years ago. I, I remember in the old building when Desert Storm Party started. It started on a Wednesday night. Uh, we were gathered there for a Wednesday night prayer meeting. Word came out that the war had broken out. We heard so much about Saddam Hussein and the Red Army Brigade, and we didn't know what we were in for as a nation. And I remember that night, a small prayer meeting, many of us people getting at the altar and the old church over there, and we cried out to God and cried out to God with tears. We believed that God could do so. And I remember on 9-11 when, when the t twin tires went down and had other planes going down to other parts of the nation. And there was a lot of un uneasiness and scare, fright, fear in the land. And what happened? The Sunday after that, Union Valley was packed. You, we had them down the hall and out the front door. And the next Sunday, back to business as usual. And now when something happens in America, not many people show up for prayer. Why? Because people quit believing in God, and they quit believing in prayer. But we are God's people, and we've got to keep believing and trusting in our God, great God. And we've got to be a people who keep crying out to him to pray. We pray on Monday morning. We've been doing it for seven years, a group of men. The number has gone up and down over the years. We started the prayer meeting out of the passage that follows in the 7th chapter, chapter 6. This is found in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And I, I told the men when we gathered, this is what I wanted. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. I believe that with all my heart. I believe that even today. And men have gathered every morning on Monday morning at 6 o'clock to, to pray. We don't pray for prayer lists. We don't pray for, for material needs. All we pray for is revival. And all the men that gather and pray, I believe they will agree with me, that everything that we've seen come to Union Valley in these last seven years, and God has been great in these last seven years, even through COVID, he's blessed us with numbers growing and never had a need for anything. And we always point to our Monday morning prayer. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. And that came to Solomon after the dedication. And God woke him up one night and said, here, I got something to tell you. You listen to me. So when we gather to pray, we pray by God's guidelines. And four things God requires of us when we pray. And I want us to think of this this morning when we leave from here in a few moments. That when we walk out of here, we're going to be a praying people. We pray according to his guidelines. Four things, we must humble ourselves. Friend, it could be easy for us as a church to get real prideful right now. We've got this nice building. Uh, we've everybody, it's full. We're pushing that 900 mark. Even the pastor couldn't find a seat for a while. And we could get real prideful and say, hey, uh, look at us. But, friend, we can't get prideful because we look around and all we can do is say, look at God. We have to humble ourselves and realize that he is God and we are his people. We keep God in the right place and we stay in the right place. We stay low before God, humble before God when we approach God knowing that we depend on him and him alone. We must recognize that without God, I can do nothing. Without God, Union Valley can do nothing. Like a song I heard one time, I asked God for help. God, need, God he needs no help. He did not need us when he created the world. He did not seek our advice on dealing with our sins or Calvary. He said, without God, I could do nothing. Without God, I would fail. Without God, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. You could put without God, put, uh, put your name in there. You could put Union Valley's name. Without God, Union Valley could do nothing. Without God, Union Valley would fail. Without God, we'd be drifting like a ship without a sail. Or I would say, without God, Tommy Miller could do nothing. Without God, Tommy Miller would fail. Without God, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Without God. And without Tommy Miller crying out to God. We must pray. And we've got to put as much prayer emphasis on prayer as we do Bible study, children's programs, youth programs, or, or music programs. Because prayer, as I said, will give life to everything that we do. That God will touch it. God will anoint it. God will empower it. God will use it for his glory. God gets the glory. We must be as committed to prayer as we are every activity. And we have to make our petitions known to God. 
There's got to be prayers of intercession in this church, asking God to move in the lives of others. There must be prayers of adoration and prayers and prayers of thanksgiving. We don't show up and just ask God to do things. We show up and thank God for what he's done and praise God for who he is and what he's going to do in the days to come. There has to be prayers of confession, contrition. What are we going to pray and ask confession over? Well, you say, I'm not really a bad sinner. Well, you can ask God to forgive you your gossip and your slander and your prejudices and your bigotries. There's sin enough among all of us that we need forgiveness. And it's more than just saying, I'm sorry, God. It's coming to him with a repentant spirit and saying, Lord, forgive me, a sinner, and name the sin that you see. And if we're going to pray that prayer, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, we've got to seek God. We seek God to discover God's will for our life. We seek God when I choose a career. I seek God when I choose the person we're going to marry in life. Uh, we choose when we will decide how am I going to respond when I'm aggravated or somebody does me wrong. Am I going to respond like the old devil? Am I going to respond like the devil's kids? Or am I going to respond as God tells me to? And if we'll pray, God will change the way you respond to the things in life. And when you pray, and I think of a prayer John Kennedy mentioned in, in his inaugural address uh, to the nation uh, in 1960. And he told the nation at that time, ask not what God can do for you or what you can do for your, what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And what if we start praying, quit asking God for things and ask God, what can I do for you? Because God has already blessed us enough and we'll never repay him for all that he has done. And we have to turn from evil. We have to live holy lives. Yes, we all sin. But we don't make excuses for it. We don't glorify it. We don't laugh about it. We come to God in repentance. And we come to God in confession. Not apologizing, but repenting and turning from our sin. God wants more than an apology. He wants us to stop doing what is wrong. And we can't live in sin and expect God to bless our lives and this congregation. You don't come to church to enjoy the music. You don't come to church to enjoy the programs. You don't come to church just to enjoy the fellowship. You can be in fellowship with a person sitting next to you and be out of fellowship with God. When you walk through these doors on Sunday morning, anytime you walk through these doors, you should walk through those doors being right with God so that you can truly worship God and so that God can speak to you through the service and through the song and through the message. This is how we become the people that he's called us to be. And this is how we can be the church that needs to be dedicated to the glory of God. And when we do all of this, God hears our prayers, God forgives our sins, and God fixes our nation. My prayer, we must be a praying people. Because the times that we live in have never been as dark as they are today. And it's getting darker each and every day. We look at our young people around us, and we want our young people to have hope. And the only hope is found in Jesus Christ. And we must live that hope in front of our children, in front of our families, and in front of a lost and dying world. And how do you get this hope? Same way you get everything else. You pray, and you cry out to God. And you ask God to hear your prayer. And you ask God for his forgiveness, repenting of your sin and turning to faith in him. And as I said, God answers prayers. When you ask for forgiveness, God will forgive you. When you ask God to save you, God will save you. When you ask for God's direction in his life for his glory, God, God will direct you. But it begins with having a relationship with him and him close today by challenging us as a church to be a people of prayer but I challenge everyone here today that if you do not know anyone here that does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior you come to him today you come to him now you come to him this morning you come to him during this time of invitation 
because you may have not heard anything else this morning, but God has spoken to your heart that you're lost and without hope, and you need Jesus Christ in your life. And friend, I'm going to ask you in just a moment to come. Come to receive Christ as your Savior. I'm going to pray. We're going to stand. Heads are going to be bowed. Eyes are going to be closed. And I pray that people will respond. People will respond by coming to receive Christ as their Savior. People will respond maybe coming to unite with this church. People will respond this morning wanting to come and to follow the Lord in baptism, making a public declaration of their faith. Or maybe people will come this morning just to pray. And friend, you can stand right where you're at and pray and call out for God. God to bless this church as this church seeks to follow him. Commit your life to be in that one that follows him. I ask you to stand with your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Praise team is going to come. We're going to sing our invitation. I'm going to pray. And when I say amen, if the Lord has spoke to you, I plead with you to come. Father God in heaven, Father, again, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this church. I thank you for this people. I thank you, Father, again, for all that you've done in the past and what you're doing today and what you're going to do in the future. And God, I pray that if there is one lost soul here today, that has that saving hope that comes only from knowing Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior. Lord, I pray that they'll come to be saved. Father, if anyone has never been baptized, I pray that they'll come committing to following our Lord and Savior in baptism, making a public profession of their faith. And Father, I just pray that if anyone is broken, anyone needs prayer, that they'll come to your altar and pray. But I pray when we walk out of here today, we are committed to being the people that you've called us to be. And we can only be that people when we're crying out to you every day to do a mighty work in us. And we ask this in the name above all names. In Jesus' name we pray. As they sing, you respond to God as he speaks to your heart this morning. Thank you.
sing together. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I got to stand up. I feel like I'm in a hole down here. Uh, again, I thank you all for coming this morning. Uh, I hope you forgive me. It's just uh, an emotional time for me and didn't think it would be as bad as it has been, but it's as good as it can be. Not on a brighter note, I can say my bride is here now. I've had about the best week we've had in a long time, and I thank God for that. God's blessed for that. And... Uh, you, you keep praying for her. Oh, and I just want to say this before I forget it. I triple dog dare all of you to come back next week. All of you, as you come back. But matter of fact, you can come back tonight because we're going to be meeting tonight. And uh, Sunday nights are always good at Union Valley, and I pray they'll continue to be. Uh, but this morning, Brian and Angela Roberson, will you come forward, please? I owe these two, uh, this couple, uh, 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 my forgiveness. They've been coming for several weeks. And last Sunday night, we met, and they said they wanted to join the church. I said, give them a card. I said, okay, uh, uh, you come up and, and, and at the end of the service, and, you know, I'll, I'll present you to the church. And, you know, absent-minded is me. I'm in one mind, one mindset, and I dismissed us. Everybody went home, and they're still waiting to join the church. So they didn't give up on me. They came back. But they come want to be new tonight with our church. All in favor, let me know I'm saying amen. 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 I'm glad to have them. And so two or three of you are all that want to. You can just swarm them down here on the bottom. They'll never get out. Donald Ward, will you come? Hey, come over by me. Well, you don't want to stand by me? Hey, Donald Ward, most of you know Donald. Donald comes this morning. We'll unite with our church by letter from First Baptist Church in town. All those in favor, see him in our fellowship. Our church will be on saying amen. amen. And I got the wrong church, didn't I? Gyar Springs? No, that's him over there. Never mind. I'm so messed up today, I'll never get right. And I want you to continue to pray for Donald and, and Carla. That's what we do as a church. Uh, they've been through a lot the last few weeks. We've been praying for them. And I thank God for their faith. It's been evident to all that have come. So, again, pray for them. I thank you for coming. I thank God for what he's done today. I'm praising God for what he's going to do in the days to come. And I pray that we will pray to be the people that he's called us to be. So he can continue to use us since he's like he's been using people since 1927. Let's be faithful to God because he's always faithful to us. Tommy Jackson, would you come and close us in prayer? <laughs> 